Hello and welcome back to this series where we follow Nurgil Salimova's journey at the Women's Candidates 2024 tournament which is currently ongoing in Toronto, Canada. Today we have a look at game 2 where she played with the white pieces against Li Tingji from China who is one of the highest rated people in that tournament and obviously a very strong player. However, Li lost the game in the first round and has to play now with the black pieces where she will hope to create some chances in order to win against Nurgil. So let's see how this game unfolded. Nurgil started with d4, queen, queen spawn opening, met with d5 and uh, c4. So here most players uh, play either c6 or d6, declining the so-called queen's gambit, which is offering that c pawn to be taken. Usually at the highest level especially, players don't take that pawn and don't sacrifice a central pawn for a pawn on the wing. However, in this particular case, Lee decided to take it, which again, it's not bad or anything, it's just at the highest level especially, players typically decide to play in a more solid way. And um, looking at databases shows that about 10% of times grandmasters take this pawn. So Lee to have done that must have had a very concrete plan in how to expand and probably how to surprise a little bit Nurgil and test her preparation in Queen's Gambit accepted. The following moves are fairly standard, where players develop their king side a little bit and Nurgil recaptures the pawn. Again, when you accept the queen's gambit, actually black, the worst thing that black can do is trying to hang on to that pawn on c4. It will eventually fall from your black's point of view, but in the meantime you want to develop well. Hanging on to the pawn is probably the worst thing you can do. But in any case, we have uh, Lee on her side striking at the center with c5, attacking the d4 pawn on her own, trying to create some uh, disharmony in the center of white's position, to which Nurgil continues developing, and um, on move 7, Lee captures that pawn, and here we have the first very interesting move uh, that Nurgil was facing in terms of how to take back this pawn. And there are three ways of taking it, with pawn on d3, knight on f3, or the queen at d1. So which one to choose? Um, most commonly, players at the high, uh, highest uh, level capture with the pawn or in some cases with the knight but what they almost never do is capture with the queen since that will quickly liquidate the game into a more drawish endgame where there isn't so much chances to create any um, threats without queens on the board so what Nurgil did next will really surprise I think most people but uh, in any case definitely surprised me takes with the queen, which is a move that I really liked because it pretty much uh, asks for the queens to be exchanged on the board, which is what happened. But I really like that from a psychological perspective because maybe it's crazy, maybe that wasn't her idea, but when a few moves earlier someone starts with obviously an opening that's not the soundest and tries to create a very sharp, very aggressive opening, um, I think Nurgyo psychologically played it back a bit to Lee and said, okay, well, I understand where you're going from from a psychological perspective you want to be an attacker so let's really really neutralize this game and she gets an opportunity to do this on move eight plays a move that no one ever plays but in any case i think in this situation it really kind of takes the sting out of black's idea and black's whole mindset about the game so i think it's a really good move and it worked from her from the point of view of calming down the attack on uh, lee's part queens get exchanged and players continue developing for a few moves um, without any particular issues. You can see right away that Lee probably didn't like really the exchange of the queens and I don't think she expected it because as I said 97% of time from her preparation point of view she expects Nurgil to take with the pawn or the knight. So she played a move that was not again the soundest being a bit too aggressive with this b5 and I'm just highlighting this I think just to show you that computer, as you can see, doesn't really like the move. It's not a big problem, but it gives Nurgil a little bit of an extra edge from 0.2 to 0.5 advantage, uh, as you can see on the bar of the left. But basically, she probably didn't like at all how drawish the idea of Nurgil was, so immediately is trying to create some more imbalances, attacks the bishop right away, but probably prematurely puts the pawn on b5 without it being a big issue. But again, something that to me tells me that she didn't really like how quickly the game is completely equalized. Um, so yeah, we continue with a bit of development and I think the next interesting idea comes on 
uh, move 14 where Nurgil placed knight from d2 to e4. Uh, in this position it doesn't seem to be um, a big problem or anything that she does that. But what I found interesting is that uh, that was the move that um, uh, she thought for the most time. So it took her 19 minutes to decide where to move this knight, which is under attack from the bishop. And uh, she decided to go on e4, um, which is what the computer likes best. So probably she thought this is the time when I need to spend the most time in order to be particularly accurate in how to develop uh, and how to best prepare for exchanging some of these pieces in the next few moves and uh, she picked the correct choice so to me it was interesting that she took 20 minutes to find a move that also you might find after one second but obviously she calculated deeply and decided that that's the best idea right now for it a few moves later we have a bit of a development on the queen side and with the move rook to a4 obviously uh, she tries to Put some pressure on this bishop which is quite well placed for black um lee doesn't move the bishop of course it was defended already by the knight but she really wants to strengthen it in its place and uh, nurgyo makes it clear that what she wants is to get that bishop removed so she attacks it again with the uh, bishop of her own uh, the black square the blah, 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 dark square bishop that goes uh, on on a3 um from Lee's point of view, she's starting to develop a bit of the pieces that were not so well placed yet. So the knight from d7 jumps to uh, b6 and, of course, attacks the rook. And the rook, as you can see, is completely trapped. It cannot move. So Nurgil finds the only good move here. I mean, it's quite obvious to give some space uh, on, uh, on the rook's part. Takes the bishop here and this bishop that just took the black's bishop is also attacking the rook on f8. So capturing the rook right away is not a good idea for, for uh, black. So if Lee captures that rook before recapturing to the knight, um, white would first take the rook on f8 and it'd be up a piece in that exchange. So of course she does not take the rook on a4, but rather takes this bishop that now is well placed for white. And um, as you can see, the process of liquidating some pieces and exchanging them has become underway. In only a couple of moves, we have also the bishops being exchanged um, on move 21. And further, this game is looking more and more like a draw. We have a development on the least part of uh, rook, to, uh, rook from f to c8, attacking the knight on c3. Nurgil moves away the knight, and now we have basically another invitation for exchanging pieces. So it looks like, um, to me, that... Initially, Lee went for a more aggressive opening. Nurgil so quickly, this, you know, took the sting out of it that uh, uh, Lee was not able to really form any sort of attack after her initial plan was kind of scuppered by Nurgil. And as a result, she was a bit disoriented and didn't form another plan. It was also difficult to form plans to attack on Nurgil's side. So both players, it looks like, are heading for a draw. Here the knight is attacking the rook on a1 and also the knight on d4. So Nurgil has to capture. And after uh, this exchange, also the rooks come off the board. One pair of rooks is off the board. So no, uh, no chances for wins really, unless someone makes quick progress on the queen side and sees if one of their pawns can progress further. But Lee decides that um, she needs to push that pawn now and Nurgil has to capture it. Not capturing it will allow that pawn to get dangerously close to a1 and promote to a quit, which is something that Nurgil cannot find a good counterattack for. So the pawns come off the board and with that come every chance, comes every chance of like one of the sides winning the game. It's basically over. So that is even more certain after the knights come off the board as well. And uh, in a few moves, both players prepare to find a way to repeat some moves because you're not allowed in this tournament, which I really like to offer a draw until move 40. So you have to fight for the win or achieve such a position that is dead clear to be a draw. And if there's ever been a position that's clear to be a draw, it's this one. So Nurgil moves king to, e, uh, F, uh, sorry, king to g2, gets checked by Lee and then moves back. She could also go to king to f3 instead. Uh, which is also basically a draw, but she basically, I think, signals that with that move she is happy with repeating some moves where she can uh, shuffle the king 
between G2 and F1. And likewise, Lee also plays the most precise moves to force a draw. She could move her rook anywhere now to try some development, but she just threatens the pawn on H2, forcing kind of the king to go back to the G file, where it can get checked again. So this is how the game ends in uh, a threefold repetition. Another unbeaten game for Nurgil, starting off with two draws, uh, and Lee also gets on the score sheet with her first half point. And this Marathon of 14 game tournament continues into round three, where I'll see you again. Thank you very much and see you soon. Bye.